Welcome back to this week's episode of Get Cute and Play. This week is kind of exciting. Ooh, I'm so excited. Exciting week. Anyway, so, hey Kim. Hey Yvonne. What did you do to get cute and play this week? Well, I was in a pageant. What? It was the Mrs. Utah pageant, which is part of the Mrs. America pageant. Huge. It was crazy. And that is kind of what our topic is today. Our whole topic. Because it was the epitome of getting cute and playing. Yes. Yes. And I all encompassing. I talked to Yvonne, like she's so sweet. She gave me like a few days to like rest and reset. But I saw her this morning and I was just like, Yvonne, I just need to talk to you and I, and then, so we were just like, well, let's just make an episode about it. So yes, yes. Yeah. Hey, Yvonne. Hey, Kim. What did you do to get cute and play this week? Um, so I went to said pageant <laughs> with my girls. Which was so sweet to see them. I wanted to win because I knew you were coming. I like <laughs> the only reason I wanted to win the crown was because I knew Bina would be there. Oh, we, she was like obsessed. We've, I've never experienced pageantry. I've never it was really inspiring to watch how hard every one worked. Um, it's crazy. It's and crazy. all that it entails. And I did not realize even like how long. Not that it was bad long, but it, like. It was a little too long. Even I felt that from the backstage where it was like, this is a lot of ad living. This is a lot of talking. Like, what is taking so long? Even me and the other girls were like, does it take that long to tabulate the judges? Like. I don't know because I've never. I don't know. I never experienced it, but I was yeah. like, "Oh, two hours!" Like I thought it was just two hours. That's what they told us. They said we'll be there out. We'll be out of there at eight o'clock, and I was like, "Perfect," because my kids had a birthday party to go to, and I think we didn't get out of there till what ten? I think it was ten because yeah. I was like, we got there um, at six. Yeah, it started at and six. I don't think I got home till ten thirty. Yeah, it was so, like four hours. It was I mean, I would do it all over again. You're so sweet. You're and so that's boring. that is genuine. Yeah. I feel that way. But I was like, I just wasn't prepared for like what a learning experience it was for at, just like the audience member of never experiencing it. Yeah. So yeah. Anyway, um, we'll get back to that after our question. Are you ready for the question? Yes, I'm so ready. Favorite car. Okay. I don't even know where the love for this car came. I I think it must have come from growing up in the ballpark area of Salt Lake for a few years of my life. Um, El Camino. And if you know yes. me, I have an El Camino. My husband bought it for me like a year and a half ago. It's amazing. It still needs some work. So when we drive it, it's like if you stop anywhere, it just dies. But we're, we're going to get it fixed up this summer. But it is, man, like I still feel unworthy to have it. It's so weird. That's amazing. But like he just like having your you dream it. car yeah yes yeah and it's so cute it's really cute i'll post a picture yeah <laughs> you'll have to post a picture because i know you have pictures in front of it yes i do i've okay. taken pictures in front of it once i would like to paint it but my boys are like no it looks so cool the way it is i'm like but it's my dream it's car brown. it's like yeah it's like a copper bronzy like, what color matte. would you well okay the first the first el camino i ever saw was like totally like um like cholo is that an appropriate like it was no, cholo out yeah. and it was like like an emerald green sparkle like ooh. ooh yeah so i think something maybe like that but i do like the way that it looks it's kind of growing on me yeah. so i might just keep it but yeah yeah okay. how about you what's your favorite car your dream car i mean dream car and my favorite car okay they can be different i don't know like i really we had a slug bug growing up oh, I love and i, I would drive them. a slug bug i drive a slug you look van. so cute. Like that, either of those. The van. Mostly because it's like my childhood, yeah. you know? The van is Flavio's favorite, just so you know. Yeah, yeah. I we had a red and black slug bug. And before I was born, my parents had another slug bug. So we had a couple of slug bugs. So I would definitely say that I would, not the new version. Yeah, I want the old. The ridge. Yeah. They're more um, affordable than you think. Growing up, I always wanted a Mustang. Ooh. Less, less. Mm, less so now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would, if I were going to pick a real, like any car, I'd pick yeah. a big jacked up truck or a big Ooh. jacked up Jeep. I had no idea. Have you ever gone to like, um, test drive them? The Jeeps? No. Yeah. I, I drove. Okay. So when we were picking like between a van, yes, I drive a minivan. Um, and then like a pilot. Uh huh. Those I are great. Didn't love this was like years ago. I didn't love the way it drove like kind of 
like a truck, Mm -hmm. but it was an SUV. So maybe I just, in my head, think it would be fun, Mm -hmm. but it's not actually what I want. Well, let's get cute and play and test drive Story of my life. Yeah. Like, you know, thinking you want something and then you get it and you don't really want it. Yeah. It's kind of nice. what test drives are for. Yeah, let's go test drive some (laughs) cars. Let's do it. The Jeeps especially for you. Yeah, I want a Jeep. That would be exciting. Like, so what kind of Jeep though? There's so many kinds. They have like the truck Jeeps now. No, no trucks. Okay. Just original. Like a Wrangler? Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. Top down, Mm -hmm. big tires. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I would love it. Would you go off-roading? Yeah. Yeah. I could see you doing that. You're like, kids, get in the car. Let's go. Here's our daily activity. We're going. I mean, I don't want to do like the Moab rock climbing stuff. That scares me. But I do. I go through mud and I love it. Anyway, there you go. That's so fun. What a fun question. Okay. (laughs) So uh, let's talk pageants. Mrs. West Valley City. Let's talk pageants. Let's let's start off with when did you decide that you were going to do it? And how did it come about? Like, just start at the beginning. Right. So I knew nothing of pageants. I remember being a little girl. And back when we were younger, there were like four channels still. I remember watching the Miss America. Maybe it was Miss... I remember it was specifically Mrs. America. So the fact that I competed in the same system is wild to me. Yeah, that is wild. Because I remember playing with my Barbie and seeing the, here she is, Mrs. America. And I don't even know if they still... If that's still even a song or why that's oh, in my that brain. Was, that was the song, though. Do you remember? It was yeah, it's the, specifically it's, Mrs. Here America. she comes, Miss America. Yeah. And it was like really like, ooh. TV was wild back then. But yeah, so I mean, that was my the extent of my pageant experience. Maybe watching it one year when I was like seven or eight. Mm-hmm. So this past summer, I was at an art retreat for four days. The most beautiful people, the most beautiful experience I've ever had truly like one of them just it was amazing and I met the most amazing people and one of the women there I met she is a former Mrs. Utah and she reached out to me and so I I say this because I am so grateful that she did but I had just gotten I was either still in the hospital I was very very sick in August um or had just gotten out of the hospital so I was I was medicated (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm going to preface that. And she just was like, I think that you would do awesome at this. I think this is something because she had heard my story over the past four days. We were just getting to know each other. And, you know, I just had shared because I I had come so far in four years. I had done so much healing and I had this strong desire to start a YouTube channel. I knew it was going to happen. I had shared with you. It was kind of in the works. And so I just had shared with the people at this thing. And she's like, I think this would be really good. Um, which ironically I did not use get cute and play as my platform, but I, I think they probably should, should have, but we'll get to that later. Yeah. Um, she encouraged me. And like I said, I think I was medicated. She said, well, go watch the past <laughs> year, see if you could do it. And so I, I based my decision solely on watching the stage, year. the stage part. Yeah. Um, I think I watched 2022 because I don't think 2023 was up, but I was like, I was in a season of saying yes. Like I like to visualize jumping off the diving board and if you're afraid of heights then you'll understand what that's like if you've ever di- dived off of a, di- a diving board before I used to do it when I was a t- like little I, I don't think I would do it now mm-hmm. but I remember the first time I ever did it just being terrified but then once you just do it you either love it or you hate it right then you never have to do it again right yeah but you don't know unless you take that dive and so I was in a season of diving of saying yes so I watched the the whole thing and I was like, yeah, I could do that. Not knowing <clears throat> at the time how much work it would be. It's not just that stage portion. You create, like I said, a platform. You create this thing that you're basically selling yourself and interviewing with judges as to why you should be Mrs. Utah. And so while I feel like oh, I'm so like I I am so incredible. At the time, I didn't realize like you have to just learn to get it down and like learn to sell yourself because you only get four minutes with the judges. And I didn't know about the interview portion. So that takes place like the day before. So anyway, not knowing anything about that, I said yes in August. And to sign up, it was like September 1st or something like that. And so I did it. Okay. So what was your platform? So I did not decide... I, that is what I struggled with the most. And I, and I don't, 
regret my choice because when my husband and I, um, we've talked about this on an, on a previous episode, how my husband and I were separated for nine months during 2020, got together, got back together. Um, I had a freak accident in the shower and it, in the, like I almost died, but like my life kind of flashed before my eyes and I just realized, man, I, I realized all the mistakes that I had made in our relationship. And so we, we got a better therapist. We were healing. And I remember him sitting in therapy one day, just saying, one day we're going to share our story with other people. And I'm not sure how that's going to be. So this was like almost four years ago. Mm -hmm. And as like the last six months evolved, I just felt so strong. I toyed around with so many different things. And I, and it goes back to that, like, what's your why? What do you feel strong, strongest about? And at first, I did consider Get Cute and Play being the thing that I needed to do. But like a week before um, I had to turn in my paperwork where you have to decide your platform, I just felt strongly that it should be my podcast with my husband and then this therapist that we have coming on as, a, as an expert guest. And that is called Tough Love Talks. And so we did start that. Um, but I just feel like I was really nervous about that. And it just because I hadn't quite got it launched off the ground, I wasn't really um, as awesome about explaining my desire and what I wanted to do for the state of Utah with that podcast. And basically what it is, is I, I believe that when we heal ourselves, we can heal our relationships, our marriages, and in turn, heal our communities. But I feel like that's kind of so, that my why and I, and I feel this way a lot of times is just so like, it might be too big. My heart is too big and too full. And to be able to explain how I would do that, I just wasn't so great at it. And I think that the judges ultimately didn't feel it either. So when, because I don't remember you saying that in your intros. Do Are you supposed to say that? But we could yeah. have been screaming. So here's the thing about, the, those. about the intros. When you, when you enter the specific specific pageant you fill out some paperwork for the pageant and they did have a bio and in my bio I did talk about that and I thought and they told me we're going to read this at a certain point and I I thought that they were going to read that during um evening gown that was my understanding Mm -hmm. they came back a few days before the pageant and said we need another bio this one we're going to read during swimsuit and so I thought, well, I can't, re- I can't have it say the same thing as my other bio, oh. but I think that was a detriment to me. I feel like that was Absolutely. a miscommunication. Because they didn't do anything at, during evening gown. They said nothing during evening gown. And so I realized backstage after the results had come in, I was in the bottom seven, which is fine because we'll get to that. I was like, well, I'm being docked points because I didn't share in my bio about my platform, but I had. And so I feel like that was a detriment to me. And I agree. I agree not knowing that backstory because your, what they said during swimsuit. Was more about my personality and why the heck I'm on stage in a swimsuit, right? And you did, it said something like, oh, your journey to losing over a hundred pounds, which is inspiring and awesome and all that things, all those things. But it didn't say, it just felt like exactly what you said, like a second bio. Like yeah. you had intentionally picked different things for this portion. Right. And that makes and, more and sense. And the example they sent to us to kind of pattern it after, there were like four of them and not all of those examples talked about platform. And so I was like, okay, well, I've already given this other bio. To my understanding, we'll be read during um, evening gown, which is kind of like the last thing that the judges see mm-hmm. and hear. And I felt really good about that bio. But like to have to come up with another one, you guys, I cried so much. And I have to just say my family was such a good support system to me. And I said, I don't have the bandwidth to write one more bio. I feel like my other one was so strong. Like they just, they want to read this. So they helped me. Mm -hmm. And and I felt really good about that bio. I really did. The one that they read during swim. But then, you know, after evening gown, after I was on the stage, I'm like, they're not going to read that. So they're not going to know my platform. I also feel like, um, let's just talk about your costume too because she made this beautiful costume beautiful we'll post pictures because it's like amazing so we're required to make a costume um that represents to us something about the state of utah or you know whatever yeah and on stage if you weren't right up like maybe the judges could tell Mm -hmm. but like where we were sitting it didn't translate to pennies and she had made this whole penny top and so I'm like 
oh, what a fail. Yeah. Not from you. Yeah. But from like, I don't know, like up close pictures, like scrolling in the back. Yeah. Or, you or if know, they had like a video going where you could actually see up close. Yes, because, and then, you know, even when she was like, I am the Bingham Canyon mine. And I'm still like, it's <laughs> so emotional because I live by the B- Bingham Canyon mine. You do, yeah. <laughs> and so I was like, oh my gosh, it totally looks like it. Like that yes. is Utah to me because that's yeah. m- where I live. Yeah. And it was <laughs> the most inspiring thing. I love you. And for me, so costume technically wasn't judged but seriously the only thing I wanted out of this was best costume and the (laughs) fact that I didn't I was so devastated I had so many people I had this vision of what this costume was going to look like it changed a little bit as I got going but I feel like it was all inspired the changes um but I knew it was going to be like 40 hours of work and I and basically I was making um scale mail out of pennies and I had so many people help me. My husband drilled all the holes in the pennies. My sweet friend, Jen, came over and we spent um, many evenings together. Just you had to hand sew them all together, you know. And then I realized as I was finally like putting all the pieces together that we had sewn them backwards. So then it wasn't laying like it should have. Um, and so I had like a lot of anger with myself for that because it, it could have looked a little bit better. But then at the end, like it did, it looked like this armor and I felt like Joan of Arc and I felt so powerful and so beautiful. But the reason I chose the Bingham Canyon mine is, and maybe I think a lot of people have never been there or seen it, but I remember I was four years old and, and with my specific form of neurodiversity, I do have a photographic memory, not with everything, um, but I do. I can recall moments in my life and it is like a video. It is like a photo. And so when I thought of Utah, I was like, well, what can represent the West side where mm-hmm. West side of Salt Lake County? And it, for me, it was the Bingham Canyon mine. Cause I remember being four years old, seeing it for the first time. And there's just nothing like it. Like it, it is majestic. It is. It is really, you can see it when you fly into the Salt Lake Valley, you know that that's what it is. I mean, it, it is huge. It's Utah. huge. It's yeah. huge. If you've seen the Grand Canyon, it doesn't like, it's not the same thing, but like if you've like for me, a four year old, I was like, here's this giant hole in the ground and it was not quite as deep then as it oh, is now. Oh, it's way deeper now. But I remember there was water in the bottom of it and I remember vividly seeing this aqua colored water in the bottom of it and just being like, Psh, you know, and the problematic things with mining aside, it is a very incredible man-made thing. Mm-hmm. It is incredible. And and it is. It's one of the most industrious businesses in the state of Utah. So what, I mean, the symbol or whatever for Utah is what it industry. What represents, yeah. Yeah, and I just thought, wow, okay, this is awesome. And so just to have the support and my girls, they washed the pennies, they organized them, they counted them, made sure I had enough. My husband drilled them. Jen came and helped me sew it. And we just, together, we all created this vision of what this would be. And so I just really wanted that for them. And so when I didn't get that, I was like, oh, I'm letting everyone down. But like, that is absolutely not how anyone felt. I know it's I true. Mean, I know. Watching Kim walk the stage. <laughs> I love it. I know. Because I feel the same way. I just, like, I even said to, to my own daughter, I was like, I literally feel like a proud mom. Like, I, every time she came out, I was in tears. I was like, oh my gosh, she looks so beautiful. And... I know how out of, I mean, for anyone, imagine being in your 40s, never doing a pageant, and then this. Yeah, and having to walk across the stage in a swimsuit. And and I honestly, to be honest with you guys, I, the director said um, during the weekend, because we spend two days together, we spend the night at the hotel, and we have like these activities, and she's like, you all should have known that um, 75% of it is based on how you look. And I was like, oh, I did not know that. I thought 50% was based on judging because you meet with these judges. There's five of them and you get four minutes with them. Mm -hmm. And that's where you kind of sell them your platform. But they're also, so 50% of that is your score, but only 25% of your discussion with the judges is based on who you are and your ability to sell your platform. The other 25% of that interview is based on how you look. Which is insane. Yeah. So I, I don't know. Take, take with that what you want. That's fine. But I didn't know that. And so... When I found that out at the end, when I was like, oh, I'm, you know, well, after this was all over, I kind of have had a couple of really hard days where I think old, just like old feelings came up where I was like, well, I'm, I was 75% of me was not great <laughs> that I know of, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so to it's like, hard not to feel that way, yeah, right? To have to deal with those emotions. But what I will say about this is that I have had six incredible months 
of personal development. It has consumed me. And I probably, and I feel like that's the thing. I, I'm not great at compartmentalizing. I, I did want to do this. I, I committed to this. And I'm just so excited about the, the things in my community that I was able to do and the opportunities I was able to serve where mm-hmm. I wouldn't have been before. Yeah, yeah. For that, I am so grateful. Um, and I have become so much stronger in myself. So I, that's what I was angry with myself for feeling less than when I was like, well, Kim, you only have four minutes with each of these judges. And I did make four of them tear up. So I felt like, okay, I'm, I'm in the top 10. Like I got this, but I have to also remember the week before I really felt like this is not where I want to be in my life. And I remember praying and just specifically asking God, please just let me be in the bottom seven because they're as I've on long this journey, I've seen these women who wanted it so much more than I did. And I wanted that place to be for them. And so I've just over the past few days, I've just really had a lot of time to think, Mm -hmm. think about my worth and um, the rooms that I want to be in, the places I want to be. And I am grateful for where I landed, for the things that I learned. I'm grateful that my friend encouraged me to get cute and play in a way that she had. And I just think, gosh, she's so amazing that she won that crown. And I am no less amazing. You know, it's just these humans making these decisions and, um, you know, I've lost 110 pounds and my body will never, ever be perfect. It, it, it just won't. And, and so I have to remember, like, I, the, the people in my community, I just want to end that. They're like, when I came out on stage and got to introduce myself, I was screaming into the microphone. My name's Kim Orland. Well, I just said Kim Orlandini. This is West Valley City. And the roar was so loud and I'm screaming into the mic and I could not even hear myself in the microphone. So um, to see my people and my community show up for me in such a big way while I'm doing this thing that I feel so vulnerable about because if you know me at all, I do not like the spotlight on me. But it gave me, I was so proud every time to come on stage and I probably smiled too big and I like no, whatever, it was but so she did so good. how could I not with the amount of love? And when I walked out in my swimsuit, I could hear specifically my little sister saying, that's my sister. And me and my siblings have been through so much that I just think, Four minutes is not enough time to get to know what I could do for the state Utah. of Utah. Yeah, like how I had mentioned that last week where before the pageant, I just was like, you know what? I really knew this is not where I'm comfortable. I'm mm-hmm. not. I really am not. But I knew also that I would I can do more work within my little community and that's where I want to be. Yeah. And, and in preparation, I missed some things um, that I would have liked to be there for. And I just thought, you know what, this is not what I don't want to be. There's this is so much about me because you have to prepare mm-hmm. that I kind of lost myself in it a little bit. Yeah. And so I'm just I am grateful for the experience. But anyway, when I walked out after packing my my bag and my stuff and I came out to greet everyone, I was so, I was so nervous. Um, not because I thought they would be sad that I didn't like place or get anything or whatever, but just because I don't want to be the center of attention, but it came out and all of you guys were wearing these blue shirts with crowns on them that said T- Team Kimothy, which has become my nickname in my community. And I just ugly cried. It was <laughs> blah. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's what it was all about for me. Like the love that I have put into not just my family and my friends, but into into strengthening West Valley City and West Valley City gets a bad rap. I hate Absolutely. it. I hate it so bad because as a real estate agent, I get like people just uh, anywhere but West Valley or you know I've lived here for 24 years. I've lived in um, five different homes here, five different communities, and it has the best people. And if and you you're don't, one of them. Yeah. You're so <laughs> But yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it for anything. And, and, and really that was like, the divine was like, you know what, Kim, this is where you can do the most good. And this is where I want you right now. And I want you to do this podcast with Flavio and, and it'll be so great. And I want you to continue on this path with Yvonne because it's touching people. 
Yeah. And so really, like, I just think I have won so much. Like, you taught me to start dancing. I'd never danced before in my life. All those TikTok dances, you nailed it. Prepare me. On stage. Oh, I don't ever want to watch the video (laughs) because they they ended up changing some things that morning. And I, with my neurodivergency, I just, I struggle with like moving my body. I've never done it before. So I'm sure like if the more I practice, the better it would be. But they changed some stuff and I was like... Okay, this probably doesn't look the best, but just smile and go with it. You and know? I think that's the thing that was like most impressive is, um, you know, she was nervous about walking and about all these things. And so at coming in, you're like, oh, I hope she does this and I hope she doesn't do this and I hope she doesn't do this. And she fit right in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you you absolutely said that. nailed it. You said I didn't know who had competed before and who hadn't because I really you just didn't. looked so good. She yeah. looked good. I didn't. I didn't pick her apart. I wasn't judging. <laughs> yeah, but like I did see another girl slip. Yeah. Thank you very much. Because we're all human. Because, I, but yeah. like that's what you were nervous about, yeah. and it's like I can't even remember what girl it was. No yeah. one remembers that. They remember, who, you know, who you are. Yeah, I'm so grateful for the people that I met. Um, you know, if you judge pageantry, there are those people that um, they are the stereotypical pageant people. And I will not continue my relationships with them. I'm going to be very honest with it, like with you. Like when you're around people for two whole days, you see their true colors. Absolutely. And, but there are a handful of them that I love and I will hold dear to my heart and I will consider them friends for the rest of my life because they're in it for the right reason. Mm-hmm. And th- that's been really beautiful. Yeah. yeah, it was so it was so inspiring, so yeah. inspiring for me, for my kids. Like it just, it was everything. I was yeah. like so proud of you. Yeah, you did such a good job. I just want to end here, like, um, you know, the politics of pageantry aside, whatever your feelings are about it. If you do see a woman or a girl wearing a crown, wearing a sash, they have worked so hard to be worthy mm-hmm. of that. Um, and I will say most of them are in it for the right reason. They they want to serve their community. They they want to further their platform of serving their community. And they have worked so hard, especially if they have a crown on their head, they have nailed it. So they it's they're deserving. So give them the respect that they deserve. I mean, you have a crown too. They did. So they gave us all tiaras. You're, you're deserving. So yeah, so deserving. Man, you guys, I worked so hard. Let me just tell you, I've you never worked harder that. for anything in my life. So well. you 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 looked beautiful thank you beautiful doing it thank you so much and thank you to everyone in my community and my friends and family for supporting me that really truly I've won so much she did so good so proud of you girl thank you Yvonne oh we're so glad Mm. we made it through the pageant we did we did it now on to like almost summer the ultimate get cute and play was this doing something hard showing up for yourself looking stunning oh you're so sweet oh all the things wrapped into one. Yeah, could you even get play get cute and play harder? I don't know. No, there, <laughs> you have peaked. Oh, you're you so you can't sweet. go up from here. You're so, so sweet. You're so sweet. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us today on today's episode. And if you want to comment down below about pageantry, yeah, let us know what you guys yeah. think or what you think you thought about pageantry or what you thought you knew about pageantry. Or if you watched her. Kim and just tell her how hot she is. You guys, stop. I so would love sweet. that too. So sweet. Thank okay. you so much. We'll see you next week. Bye. See you later.